Hello everyone and welcome to Best Side Cycling. Today we're here on the Sammamish River Trail. This is definitely one of the most popular places to ride in the entire King County, Seattle area. It runs from Marymore Park in Redmond to Blythe Park in Bothell for about a distance of 10.1 miles and an elevation gain of 200 feet. Now, this is a complete ride through with full commentary along the way, so you're definitely going to get way more details than you'd ever expect to want to know about this trail, but trust me, it's definitely worth it and worth giving a ride. So without further ado, let's get started. We're officially on the Sammamish River Trail, with just behind us being the Marymore Connector Trail that leads us eastbound through the park and to the East Lake Sammamish River Trail that can help you circumvent the lake on its east side. Really, this trail has a plethora and a lot of different options to connect to. Speaking of trails alone, we have those two trails as well as the 520 trail, the Tolt Pipeline trail, and the Burke Gilman trail. Uh, all just easily connectable and future, in the not distant future, the East Rail trail as well. So really, uh, this trail go connects all the way from Redmond to Woodenville to Bothell, but along the way there's just so many different outlets and things you can do but in itself it's a great destination with a ton of views that I'll continue to talk about but here we have some construction detours uh, that they've set up and uh, it's really just uh, sort of on track but here up ahead we see the beginnings of the Redmond Link uh, light rail uh, as it will connect over to the east side in this next couple years uh, more on the sort of southwest end of things. It'll reach all the ways here to Redmond uh, soon after that. So that's super exciting. But yeah, as I was saying, the Sammamish River Trail is already a super duper popular spot for everyone. Families, walkers, joggers, rollers. Every I've seen sort of everything, even equestrians are sometimes here. With great sights of the Cascades, the Sammamish River Valley, Mount Rainier. It sort of has it all, but for me, my favorite part is once you get really close to uh, sort of the Woodenville wineries, it really feels like you're in a completely different space uh, from suburban to just sort of out in wine country or something like that. But anyway, as we continue here, uh, we're going to reach sort of one of our first connections. Uh, be careful on this sort of bridge and blind corner. I've definitely seen people sort of riding down this way too fast. So heads up here, but anyway, this will let is the first part where you can connect onto the 520 trail. So if you make a right here coming up, right about here, you can go onto Leary uh, Way, and then that there is a the direct path onto the 520 trail westbound. Careful though, that's a little hilly, but I will definitely uh, make another video on that. But that will go all the way towards Seattle. So that's part of a really great loop that I'll talk about more. But here on the right, if you make that turn out that I was just passed, that then you can reach Redmond Town Center. So this whole south area is packed with amenities being right adjacent to not only the Sammamish River, but also to Redmond the city, at City Hall, a lot of bike shops right here, Element Cycles being one of the closest ones. There's a lot of different things, so it's pretty exciting here, uh, just closer to the sort of Redmond uh, core, but uh, needless to say, there's a lot of things to do on this trail. So as you keep going along here, um, I think one of the main questions people might have is like, how do you access this park and where can you go to um, sort of start your ride? I think the most common options are probably among the, all the parks that it passes through. So Marymore Park is one of them, but you do have to pay parking there, uh, a small fee. There's also going to be Blythe Park in Bothell, and then there's going to be the Wilmot Gate Park, Gateway Park, and then the 60 Acre Park along the way uh, in that Woodenville area. So as you see here, there's going to be sort of a lot of little outlets uh, throughout the trail that leads you onto different roads. I probably won't cover all of them it's super duper in detail unless uh, I know that there's something right there. but. Um, yeah, so with all those different parks that's connected, I think I just mentioned like five of them. Uh, there's a lot of easy ways to enter a trail. And up here too, you see this sort of wooden bridge. This is the Redmond Connector Trail uh, that goes 
sort of west and north and it connects you right in the city but you can then detour it onto this trail but this I took this footage I took back in October so definitely you'll notice a lot of the autumn foliage and everything else and the really amazing thing is that I really just uh, rode through this entire thing so I was definitely being here riding on the Sammamish River Trail it is super duper flat and it's and definitely the pavement I would say is really nice compared to the likes of the Burke Gilman uh, where there's often a lot of roots and bumps uh, the Sammamish River Trail definitely feels a lot nicer though I will call out that there are parts of it closer to this side that do have um, some things to watch out for but all of those usually will be outlined by paint on the ground so actually look out for those if you see it and as always if you enjoyed this video please roll over the like button and subscribe and hit that bell icons just in case I upload any videos we cover local cycling content here in the Seattle King County area and everything from bike infrastructure bike climbs and just videos in general to get you on your bike so here this green open space I believe is called the stroll with some nice playgrounds and things to do and that's one thing that's really awesome about this trail is that I find that there's just a lot more places to sort of stop to turn off and sort of enjoy uh, contrary I guess the Burke Gilman closer to the middle parts uh, there's definitely a lot of different attractions but in terms of just like a family friendly trail this is probably one that <laughs> takes the uh, wind in that regard just because it is a little bit quite a decent bit wider the trail is nicer and on that note I want to talk a lot about just how we ride this trail really uh, the speed limits here in the King County area is 15 miles per hour on trails and I think that's a very suitable number I know that a lot of people ride on this Sammamish River Trail can get really really fast and it's Honestly, in some cases, it's just quite safe to do so just because you have these big open sight lines that you can sort of see now. But just in case, uh, I think it's really worth saying that if you do start to get closer to pedestrians, other people, definitely watch out. Especially little kids or dogs, they are really, really unpredictable. And uh, I don't want, and you don't want to be the person to crash into anyone else. Moving on though, so as we start to exit from the Redmond area, there's sort of, a, I, I started to note them ahead a few sort of key sites along the way, but the one that we're soon approaching now is going to be sort of the Sammamish River Valley coming up onto the left. And that's also, I think, a very, very big golf course, but some really fantastic views, as well as just this really big tall tree line here on the right. That sort of continues for a lot of our way all the way till we get a lot closer to Woodenville. So up ahead here I think there's a bridge that can connect you across to the Sammamish River Valley. There's also some trails there. I think one of them's called the Puget Power Trail. I haven't personally ridden it but it is here and so it's this connection I've seen uh, a lot of times. But speaking on connections one of my favorite things about the Sammamish River Trail is just how connected it is to it, namely to things like the Burke Gilman Trail that goes all the way from Bothell down through sort of a lot of the key parts of Seattle to Ballard at Golden Gardens. And you can literally ride from end to end and connect all the way, but I'd say one of the most common and favorite routes of mine is doing sort of the north side where it's just the Burke Gilman connected with Sammamish River Trail back onto the 520 trail so that's about 40 odd miles and it's this nice big loop and then if you're looking for a really big day um, more than the Lake Washington loop is enough to satisfy you then one other really common route is the two, I like to call it the two lake route uh, which is you use the Sammamish River Trail and then the East Lake Sammamish probably road but because not all of the East Lake Sammamish River Trail is actually paved yet, that's in progress right now, but it sort of stops at a point. But essentially, you use the Sammamish River Trail to uh, get your way around uh, Lake Sammamish as well, as well as Lake Washington for a nice 80 mile loop. So both of these are fantastic rides, but as we can see here, um, this 
Uh, wasn't that particular? This is a fantastically nice day, and you can just see how many people are here on the trails. But I know for certain that, especially once you cut to the summer months, it is absolutely packed in here. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind, even with the sort of wide trails, that you can definitely expect a lot of different traffic as you're going along here as well. But definitely let me know in the comments below. What's your favorite part about riding this trail? I think there's just a lot of different things to um, attract different folks. So I'm curious to hear what uh, your favorite parts are for this trail. My favorite part is definitely just the escape from the city. Uh, in Seattle downtown as a stark comparison, you're riding really close to cars, you're often breathing a lot of the exhaust here. There is not really any roads really on site uh, for a lot of this path. There's going to be sort of just wide open countryside views on the left and the right. Um, here you see the nice sort of golf course on, on the left and then potentially you can see Rainier behind you and the Cascades over to the right. So that's just really amazing just having this whole pretty much maybe like five mile stretch that really has this ambience and that's something really really hard to replicate uh, here in the King County area it's closer to an urban area so here you see right on the right this is where it really completely opens up and whatever you're here for uh, you've sort of seen all the different types of activities going on this is a great place to visit and to enjoy so coming up is sort of one of the first sort of um, intersections uh, sort of of interest there's also this one is i believe 116th street and this is where uh 60 acres park is where there is a parking lot for the sammamish river trail and it's sort of on the same parallel as totem lake so if you so heading westbound you basically hit totem lake in kirkland but here it's still technically redmond and out is that connection over there and as we go along, there's going to be sort of more and more things uh, coming up and different things to connect to. So that's super exciting. The next one sort of up ahead that I think is worth talking about as well is 124th Street. And that one is basically in the future within a year or so. Uh, there's work from the East Rail, which currently basically goes up to the Cross Kirkland Corridor Trail which basically ends up right around Totem Lake. That extends a little bit north here and they're gonna make a connector from the calling the Wills connector that will connect that to this trail around this portion. So what that means for us is that once that can East Rail is officially connected with the Sammamish River Trail, you'd be able to ride here, connect onto Kirkland, all the way to downtown Bellevue. Right now there's a big gap there, but in the future when the trestle portion of it is built you'll be able to ride all the way south to Renton and that's basically my neighborhood and some places I'm very familiar with but just the prospect of that is super exciting if we think about it you'll be able to ride all the way from Woodenville to um, Renton without hitting a single car or running I mean uh, being encountering a single car that's about I think 40 odd miles uh, or 30 something miles of, of trail so um, yeah, and here we're just at that 124th Avenue now, so this is about where that parallel will be in the future with other connections. As we continue along here, something I did really want to call out from before as well is just how many nice bike shops there are right at the south end of the trail. So right in that Redmond area, right beside the trail there's the Element Cycle store, but as well as the Pedeco electric bike store, a Trek Redmond store, as well as Element and Spoke, and they're all right near there. So if you ever need to be sorted out, uh, this is a great place and a lot of places to stop. And not to mention that that ends up being a really nice gathering point or starting point for a lot of rides. Uh, Redmond is not only known for just connecting here on the Sammamish River Trail, but just for a lot of rides heading in the northeast direction towards Carnation, or just north towards Woodenville. Um, there is a lot of riding to do around here. 
and one of the big events in this area that start around here but don't doesn't use this trail is like the flying wheels ride that starts at Marymore Park so this could be um, a way to get there and that happens a month before Seattle to Portland in May and yeah it takes you to anywhere from Fall City, Carnation, Duval so on and so forth but one of the cascade rides that does go along here is the Woodenville wine ride so uh, that one is a much more sort of social <laughs> kind of ride which is awesome to just have that variety but yeah just a lot of the things that we're talking about here you'll really get to experience for yourself and I believe that ride is just happens in September um, the second week of September and yeah it's a 17 mile or 24 mile route and speaking about that oh, here's some views uh, this time I'm using my GoPro mount out in the front and I just basically zoomed through this entire trail but I really wanted to show you a lot of these great sites that I've been bragging about it's just uh, breathtaking in ways and <laughs> speaking also about another reason why I really enjoy uh, going on this route is the easiness and friendliness to new cyclists so I haven't brought this up a lot in my channel but I definitely will try to but I think just this whole area is great for those of you just really beginning to learn how to bike so my spouse isn't really into biking whatsoever unlike me and uh, the Sammamish River Trail is one of the few places that she's willing to ride on just because of the non-technical course as you can tell there really isn't any turns or anything uh, granted uh, you're gonna be just going at those controlled speeds but also it's pretty neat because you can basically ride on if you're just learning how to cycle or maybe you're learning how to use clipless pedals for the first time there's a lot of really flat green spaces in the Marymore Park area that you can use to practice and then once you feel comfortable enough uh, then heading out on the trail for some simple flat riding. I think that makes a fantastic combination. So definitely keep that in mind if you need a place to uh, get your first sort of ins and outs of cycling. But the next intersection we're approaching is now getting into that wine country. So 145th Street. And yeah, um, from there it's basically Woodenville and there's a ton of tap rooms, cellars, uh, wine stores all around uh, just look if you just do a quick google search you'll just see how many hits you'll get in that area as well as if you turn left on 145th street and then turn right onto 138th way you start the winery climb which is one a pretty really steep climb that I will feature later on this channel and it's part of the seven hills of Kirkland ride so that is a charity ride, but also it's just a famous route that is about 40 miles where you just take on all the hills you can find in Kirkland. Uh, they are you, <laughs> decently steep, each one around 400 to 500 feet. So it's a good amount of elevation ride if that's something you're looking into and something I will cover more in the future. But uh, I would say definitely if you are a connoisseur of wines, uh, this could be a good stop for you but definitely don't overdo it if you still need to keep riding and another thing to sort of call out here is uh definitely at least in this section there's a bunch of big manholes on the ground but there's also the, the tunnels that will you pass by occasionally and some of them do get a little bit on the narrower side and sort of dark so that's something else i would definitely look out for that like you see in here and then with the ongoing construction right now, it's actually quite tight. But this is 145th, what I've just been talking about. And you can turn out onto that uh, using this uh, junction right here. And then right around here, there is some construction at the time of filming, which was around October 2021. Um, I think basically along the trail, there's always candidates for construction. But this is near, I think it's called the North Shore Athletic Fields. But the nice thing also about this trail is, and there's a lot of nice things, but there happens to be multiple restroom stops along this nine mile path. This one, as you can tell right now, is sort of blocked off. But hopefully, I think within this year, this should be all opened up again and ready for riding, which will be great. And then up next is actually another trail connection. And this is the Tolt Pipeline Trail. 
that's going to be coming up and this is a gravel route so uh, it's going to be pretty different from uh, everything else around here and uh, definitely if you want to give that a shot there is the really famous hill coming and it's here on the if you can see the signage here on the right um, that was indicating the, the pipeline trail and yeah what the, there is a really famous climb there called the heart attack hill it's definitely worth a try if that's something that you're interested in but gravel is something unfortunately that i don't have too much expertise on so if you do have any particular questions leave them below and i'll get to it uh, and and try to find out some answers but now we head into a different scenery as we start getting sort of north end of Woodenville and slowly entering into Bothell. Uh, the ride turns a little bit more into shaded forest, uh, little turns and such, a couple bridges, but still overall great views. And um, I think one of the most popular sort of destinations or stops if you're just riding along the Sammamish River Trail is one that we'll be passing up ahead soon, which is the Wilmot Gateway Park. It's this really nice park that has another restroom here. Uh, maybe I'll just make a list of how many there are along this trail, but that's a really nice rest stop. Also a really common gathering place just because it's uh, pretty accessible and lots of parking up there. And if you're still in this video, I really appreciate it as you sort of sat through all this commentary. And uh, one other topic that I think a lot of people might be interested in, especially talking about such a nice long trail. and uh, as you've seen in the video, just so many different types of users is the topic of e-bikes. So e-bikes actually have three different classes. So there's the class one where it's basically just a pedal assist up to 20 miles per hour. Then class two is similar but except it also has a throttle. So you don't need to necessarily pedal. The rad power bikes, a lot of them do this. And then the last class is a class 3 a speed pedelec where they can uh, provide assistance and reach up speeds up to 28 miles per hour so majority of e-bikes you'll find and you probably have are in those first two classes and they they are allowed to basically be treated as a normal bike so wherever normal bike they can, can be those can be too but actually the class 3 ones are not technically allowed on the shared pathways Sure, uh, there might be people that ride them along here, but I think at those speeds, um, really once you get above anything, I mean, the speed limit of 15 miles per hour, I think is relatively well thought out. I think it's a good speed where you're able to respond to most things and not cause any serious harms. But yeah, once you're going right over 25, that's uh, pretty crazy for a place like this. So definitely keep that in mind um, <laughs> if you're considering uh, if at that point really your option should be roads but even still with your e-bike uh, uh, best be prudent around here but just wanted to share that in case anyone was interested and uh, yeah uh, there's probably a lot of other motorized things that might be legal but I don't know all the ins and outs but feel free to let me know or ask any questions if you have any so uh, we're getting pretty close towards the Wilmot Gateway Park and that also happens to be very near the Woodenville Town Center that has more amenities as well, restaurants and things and yeah I think this is a great uh, sort of option as well to detour and then start heading north um, so usually going through Woodenville people I think veer off here and use some of those roads and then head your way towards like Snohomish. Uh, of course, one of the most popular and famous trails there being the Centennial Trail, which is basically a 30 mile paved trail going that goes all the way up north and is a, a dear favorite of mine because I'm from Canada and Vancouver. So just uh, I've done the art riding from Seattle to Vancouver party if, uh, before and I always interested to ride up north towards those places just to get uh, knowing that my destination is basically home so yeah um, and then from there uh, there's a t probably a ton of other rides and suggestions if you have any definitely just share them with others uh, down below but here we are at the Wilmot Gateway Park I think the reason why I, I really like this park is really because 
of just all the open and seating space and the and the washrooms are big, uh, multiple stalls and everything. Uh, it's the, it's something you take for granted to be honest. I've I've tried to do some rides before, uh, in the middle in 2020 and yeah, um, having <laughs> at that time they cut access to um, these amenities and it's sort of crazy how how much you actually rely on them to grab water or just have a good break. So. Definitely, whether you're coming in from this direction, heading in the northwest, or the other way, definitely consider using this as a good and nice rest stop. So here, we're really getting into the Balto area and starting to really get close to the final sort of destination of the Samaritan River Trail, which is the Blythe Park. And right there will be the Burke Kilman Trail at the end of this video. And it starts to feel a lot more urban or you hear a lot more urban noises here as the freeways are just to the north of us and uh, both the uh, 405 and the other connect freeway connection so uh, you'll get a little d different bit of feels coming up soon but still it's a really nice ride here and then there will be uh, continuing to be more connections to some of the bottle areas so I think there's going to be a North Creek trail that goes to the uh, Washington uh, Bothell campus as well as a, another new bridge that they built that connects you basically right across to downtown Bothell that will show off as well. So definitely a lot of things here as well. I mean I think the awesome thing about this is just how it connects the, so many different neighborhoods. Uh, the Brook Gilman really does this extremely well maybe in ways even better than the Sammamish River just because there's just so many of the top tourist attractions in Seattle all along the Burke Gilman like the Gasworks Park, the Golden Gardens, the U District for a lot of folks. Um, it's just all right there and it's just uh, so easily accessible but the, I guess the thing that to really repeat again is just how easy it is to connect between these two. Uh, basically you get this whole 10 mile uh, connection here where it's all flat and then moving on to the Burke Gilman that's another about like 30, 15 miles of connection so you have 25 miles of trail that you could technically ride around King County and I think as if you're a complete newcomer to this area it's definitely worth giving a shot um, you're gonna see a lot of different parts of it but I feel like in a way um, if you really stop some of these destinations you'll get a really good feeling for the entire city and what it has to offer especially if you're just uh, moved in here and yeah as I mentioned before uh, here's are the freeways on the right side no worries we're pretty safe from them but you definitely just start to hear some of those noises and <laughs> it's really amazing to me too just how this so conveniently follows along the Sammamish River I know it was by design but I've always considered the idea of um, just getting your own little dinghy or boat or like maybe those like water bikes and then try to bike down this entire river instead so if that's something you think that you can make happen let me know uh, maybe I'd be interested in that would be lot, lots of fun so uh, getting to these final parts of this route uh, there is a little bits of navigation at times but um, so essentially I think there's just one turn that you'll need to make to make sure you're on track to hit the Burke Gilman but it's not too complicated overall but yeah here this is the main intersection between the 405 and the Woodenville uh, Drive I think amongst other things so a lot of, lot of uh, bridges and platforms around here but we're pretty close to the uh, North Creek Trail that I was talking about that will lead you into the University of Washington Bothell campus and um, Yeah, I mean this is also an area where in terms of the actual city I probably haven't explored it as much as I could but yeah I think it'd be great just to live sort of in this area where you have access to both the Burke Gilman or the Sammamish River Trail so uh, We have another nice little bridge here and then I believe right after this you see that there is this sort of 
turn here, this other opening, and that was the North Creek Trail. And that'll take you right along there. And then the interesting thing is that we for actually encountered this little awkward gap. Um, it's still sort of technically protected bike lanes. Um, as you can see here, there's a cycle track on the right. This portion isn't very long and it's also not very busy. But yeah, for whatever reason, this section uh, is not a full isolated trail. So what happens is uh, you basically go on the cycle track and then up ahead is going to be a crosswalk that connects you right back onto the trail, taking you onto some nice windy turns and forested areas. So yeah, I mean, if any of you know the context behind this, um, let me know though. You can see I sort of make a maneuver here to sort of ride on the road and just make a left turn onto the trail. But definitely do whatever uh, is comfortable with you and make sure to stay safe as the, this is, yeah, the only real gap um, in this whole trail. And at least there is technically protected bike lanes. So this next part leading right, us right near to Bothell is uh, another sort of neat sort of scenic change um, it's going to be a much more forested area and it's like pretty windy uh, but generally still uh, pretty flat so quite manageable though yeah it just sort of seems to like hop over and in between the river so here on the bridge was a very popular spot for people to just look look down and enjoy some of these sights here but regardless the Sammamish River is still here, it just happens to be on our right instead. Uh, so with this, I think really the last two things to call out, and I know it's been a really long video, is the walking bridge um, that would take you across to uh, downtown Bothell. And there, I think right across the bridge is the Bothell Historical Museum, as well as the Bothell Landing Park. But yeah, that's going to be how you get to the main parts of Bothell with all the restaurants and things and uh, I think the uh, Pop Kini Stadium basically at the city center so it's pretty neat I mean uh, <laughs> I've <laughs> definitely talked through just so many different places you can go and visit so whatever whichever area you're starting from hopefully this will provide a little bit of guidance or guide or ideas of what to expect what you can see here and uh, definitely make this some ride that you would uh, do here in the King County area and then coming up ahead here is actually I think another park that I missed of a potential parking area to start and that is the aptly named Sammamish River Park so just in a in a in a quick turn uh, we're going to see a bunch of cars parked here to the left and that's going to be uh, the entrance there and this is really bordering what is defined as the Sammamish River Trail, you know, soon turn into the Burke Gilman. So, yeah, um, right here to the left, this is the Sammamish River Park. And yeah, I, another option among so many that I sort of listed to where you can join up with this trail and find good, easy places to park and start your ride. And then coming up here is the newly built connection to the old walking bridge as it's called on Google Maps uh, into the bottle area so you can ride up this slope and then go across the bridge uh, to access all those bottle amenities I just mentioned earlier and yeah I, I think it's pretty cool um, that they definitely made that bike accessible you saw steps there at the end but they did definitely make it a point to have that slope and we're just about there. We did notice a little bit more of the paint markings on the ground just back over there. That just means that there is uneven bumps, but generally it's really fine uh, all throughout the trail. And I really hope you all enjoyed that long uh, tour and information guide about this whole trail. Let me know what you thought or um, what you uh, expect to do. Um, when you expect to ride this trail next time, really that's all this channel is here for, just to encourage folks to get on their bikes here in the Puget Sound area. So if there's anything that will help you to do that more, just feel free to let me know. And as we're approaching the Burke Gilman, there also is one more, uh, not really 
surprise, but there is a tiny bit of a hill right before the connection point, and it's basically the it, it's it's not very it's not a big hill or anything, but like the whole route is so flat uh, compared to uh, most rides that you'll do that um, any gradient change will be quite noticeable. And yeah, also to call out here, um, you see all these leaves on the ground, especially since now it's autumn. Uh, just watch out for um, the slickness. Uh, wet leaves are definitely, one, amongst many other things, one of the things that your bicycle tire does not like. So uh, if you're ever rolling over those, really don't make any sudden movement or turns or you might end up having a crash video like mine. And I mean, no one wants that. But here's another bridge. It's uh, really fascinating how many of these we've crossed through. Uh, this entire ride and then it's just gonna be a left and this hill that I was talking about uh, and luckily there's a sign here indicating the trail but with this we're basically at the Burke Gilman and then I'll make a continue my series of videos on that but basically you'll be in the Kenmore area and that will slowly lead you all the way through uh, towards the main Seattle core so thank you so much for watching i know that this was definitely a doozy and if there was anything that you especially appreciated about the video please let me know in the comments below and i'll definitely try to inc in, uh, incorporate more of that and thank you to all of you that did participate in the poll to choose this route i'll see you all in the next video